This is a picture of the moon through my Lumix GF7 camera with a 20 millimeter lens, which I realized wasn't the best choice for um, the subject at hand, but it was the lens I had on my camera at the time. This is a picture of the moon that same night through my 70 millimeter Celestron travel scope. This here handy little telescope that I bought a couple weeks ago. Now this was taken during lunar apogee, which means the moon was in the farthest point of its elliptical um, orbit around Earth at the time of taking this. So the, the moon was smaller than it could have been. It, in, in fact, during, the, during perigee, it could have looked like 14% bigger. So, I mean, it's a pretty nice shot considering the time of taking it and the price of my equipment. Let's weigh the pros and cons of this telescope and find out what else it can see. So this telescope runs at about $90 right now on Amazon. I bought it secondhand for $50, which was a pretty good deal. But either way, this is a decent telescope for beginners who want to just dip their toes in astronomy before they start checking out the, paying the big bucks. Now this little guy is lightweight and portable. Um, like it doesn't weigh hardly a thing. And it comes with a handy little backpack. So you can take it anywhere you want. And it is quick and easy to put together. When you get it from the bag, all you really have to do is put this finder scope on, um, align the finder scope, and maybe like put in the, put in this little wide joint here and then your eyepiece. Put it on the tripod, very straightforward. More expensive telescopes on the other hand, usually come with nicer tripods that are um, a little harder to set up. You have to balance the tripod. Um, I haven't done it, but, but it could take a little bit more time and more expensive telescopes require something called collimation, which is basically you have to manually align the mirrors inside the telescope so that everything lines up properly. And uh, with this, you know, it's so straightforward and simple that it didn't require any of that. So it was pretty much good to go out of the box. I brought this home and put it together in about 20 minutes, took it outside to align the finder scope during the day, and that night was able to see some, uh, some stars. Not the moon because it was currently a new moon and there was no moon, but it could have also looked at the moon with it. Now obviously at this price, the materials aren't gonna be top quality. The tripod is cheap and kind of a hassle to adjust. For example, I'll go to adjust the panning side to side and the tilt up and down by loosening these handles here. And then once I align my object in, in the lens or the finder scope, I'll tighten it and then find that doing so slightly adjusts or shifts uh, the, the view, which can make it hard to get the object in the very center of the lens, which is where the best viewing experience is gonna be. It's gonna be most clear in the center. So you just gotta be gentle with it and be patient and it'll stay in one piece and get the job done. Like it's not the most sturdy tripod, but you know, it stands on three legs, so <laughs> it works out. Okay, now to the interesting part. What kind of views can you get with this thing? Well, you saw my shot of the moon already. To figure out how much this magnifies something, you take the focal length of the telescope, which is basically the length of the telescope, in this case, 400 millimeters. And then you divide that by the focal length of the eyepiece. Now, I currently have a uh, 10 millimeter lens on mine. This one comes with both a 10 millimeter and a 20 millimeter. You can kind of see the difference in size there, maybe. So what's the difference between these two guys? Since you're dividing the focal length of the telescope by the focal length of the eyepiece, the smaller number, uh, in other words, the shorter eyepiece, will give you the greater magnification. 400 divided by 10 is 40. So this is a four times magnification. The 20 millimeter lens would give you a 20, 20 times magnification. I think I did the math right. Anyway, why would you want less magnification? Well. Um, more magnification doesn't mean more detail. So it, it just means a bigger image. You could look at a blurry star, you know, because this can't see a lot of stars very big, put in the, the, the bigger eyepiece and you would just get a bigger blurry star. If you want more details, you need a bigger aperture, which is basically the width of the telescope. I mean, it's actually the, the eyepiece inside, but the width of the telescope will give you a good idea. A rounder, a bigger rounder telescope will have more light gathering capabilities and then you can see more details. And this is why I'm excited to upgrade my telescope soon. Just costs a lot more money. So with this telescope under good conditions, I can see the craters on the moon, pretty distant view. I can see Jupiter and its four Galilean moons. And I can see um, Saturn with a slight bulge in its silhouette, which would be the rings of Saturn. But 
there's really not much detail and it's it's pretty difficult to see even under great conditions. Although I did adjust the brightness and contrast on this image of Jupiter and guess what I saw? Yeah, the bands of Jupiter? <laughs> what? Couldn't really see that in real life, but enhance that image right there and check it out. <laughs> I know it's kind of pixelated, but it's there. That's Jupiter, my folks. Yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat. So in sum, I know it doesn't sound like much and you are pretty limited in what you can see with this telescope. But it is so neat to see these things for yourself in the night sky. I mean, the images don't do it justice, even even with the, I mean, they're cool, but seeing it in person with a telescope, the night sky is beautiful. So I would recommend this telescope for beginners who want to give it a try and see what astronomy is like and, and see a couple cool things and, you know, experience it. But if you want to see more than what I talked about, then you are going to want a bigger telescope and a more expensive telescope. Still, I am not done playing with this toy. It's quite fun and I am excited to check out Orion's belt when he comes up over the horizon on my side, uh, uh, my side of the hemisphere this winter. I'm not sure if I'll be able to see much, but that's okay. Stargazing is just fun. But even without a telescope, the night sky is beautiful. It really is. So, yeah, so beautiful. So take some time to look at the sky tonight, if conditions allow, and think about how amazing our universe is. And most of all, remember to smile. Thank you for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know what to do next. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Please have a good day, and I will see you next time.